Hello and good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you're joining us from. My name is Aditya Bansod. I'm one of the founders and CTO at Luma Health. And today we're kicking off an exciting new discussion series called Digital Health On Air. It's the first of a weekly series here at Luma talking about all the things that are changing in the world of digital health. We'll have various guest speakers, we'll have various topics, we'll have various Luma folks join, talk about all the things that are helping digital health in the United States transform to be more patient friendly, more accessible, and just better for outcomes. Today, I'm joined by Spiro and Tara, two of our incredible account executives here at Luma, to talk about a very specific topic for our inaugural uh, on-air episode, which is effective patient scheduling in Meditech Expanse. Kind of an interesting topic to kick off an entire series with. And the number one reason why this is top of mind for everybody, why now, why do we want to talk about this today, is because competition and challenge of actually building a patient-facing patient -facing digital experience across a very competitive landscape. So we'll kick off in a discussion. And to start us off, we're going to start with a couple intros. And I'd like to have uh, Tara, if you want to tell us a little bit more about where you are, where you're from, where do you live, uh, and the where do you work inside of Luma, and kind of the things that you hear from your customers. Sure thing. Thanks, uh, Dithya. So again, my name again, Tara Guardia, one of the senior account executives here at Luma Health. Uh, I work specifically with regional hospitals uh, in the Northeast and mainly on Meditech. So you know, this is definitely uh, top of mind for all of my customers because in the Northeast, it's a very, very heavy and dense uh, healthcare landscape. So, you know, regional, uh, regional hospitals, you know, their story goes that, you know, every day is a fight to stay alive. So creating that seamless patient access, whether it be for a patient just to simply schedule a visit or have direct access to their care team when they need to have a conversation is always top of mind. And I would say at the forefront of every evaluation that I have. Um, you know, regional hospitals is I've, I, as I've grown to, to, to know and love them and the year and a half that I've been working with them so far is that, uh, they're really the heartbeat of their communities and they're often looked at as the economic backbone of, of a small town or, or the communities where they, they are, you know, they've been around hundreds of years in some cases. So, uh, being independent and being able to keep their patients coming back and close to home is is always, like I said, at the forefront of, of uh, my evaluations and definitely a top of mind topic, I would say, for all the leadership teams that I work with. So access, 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 and uh, how can we you know, uh, compete against these larger um, healthcare uh, enterprise systems that they're neighboring? Yeah, I mean, we hear that all, all over the place. Uh, I had the opportunity to be in Shreveport, Louisiana yesterday talking to a 100-year-old Meditech-powered system and very similar stories around access. Uh, Spiro, you, you're, you joined me here in the South. Where uh, tell us where you're at, what you what and what you see, and kind of give us a little intro about about Spiro. Appreciate it, Nitya. Yeah. yeah, Spiro, I'm one of the account executives here at Luma Health uh, alongside Tara. Uh, I'm based out of Dallas, Texas. Uh, go Texas. Um, <laughs> so I, I cover most of the central part of the U.S. and the Midwest. And um, on the flip side of the coin, uh, with what Terra faces uh, in the very densely populated areas, a lot of the folks that I work with are in very rural communities. And uh, where oftentimes they're, they're the only player in town and um, you know, they're faced with a patient population where really that's their only option for healthcare. A lot of cases, they're the largest employer in their area. Um, so ultimately what, what the folks I work with are, are looking to solve for is you know, improving digital access across the care continuum in a way that allows them to stay competitive with you know, other health systems that may be in a nearby major town uh, or just delivering that that elite experience for their patients uh, just because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, so you know, a lot of the folks uh, that I work with, they're, they're laser focused on that. And uh, yeah, I think Aditya, you're probably going to hit on this later, but yeah, I was, I was working with a group uh, in Missouri actually yesterday uh, at one of the Muse events and uh, it's it's becoming a real thing across all of rural Missouri, uh, bringing digital access to the forefront of all patient experience, and uh, it's becoming a hot topic with the community for sure. Yeah, so it, I'm excited to have this discussion. It's a great it's a great segue to a couple of things that I wanted to chat with you guys about, like knowing you know regional health systems. In you know Terry, you're you're in the Northeast, like super like er, like dense, but not necessarily urban. Right. So here you cover a region which is like you know, not necessarily dense, but like, you know, intense, like lo intensely local in their communities. But in some ways, like it's kind of the same problem set everyone's trying to solve for. It. So Tara, can you talk to me a little bit more about like what you think is top of mind, what you hear from all the CIOs and, you know, access directors you talk to? Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that is important when it comes to the technical side of the evaluation and digital access is really being able to meet the patient where they are. 
Yeah, I had the opportunity to attend HIMSS last week, and this was very big topic uh, and all and discussed all over the showroom floor. You know, you've got um, lots of competition out there that we've mentioned. So, you know, having a, a, an access or an online scheduling system that allows a patient at, let's say, any time of day when it's convenient for them to go and schedule a visit is important to do so. But then to the CIOs on the technical side of things, to be able to do that internally with one integration, one platform that they can scale with, is definitely uh, important because while access is on the forefront, there's all kinds of other workflows that stem from that that also need the automation. And you know, I think a lot of my customers turn to Luma for this because we can um, scale with them and we can do this with one integration into their into their system. Uh, so that's that's really what is I think appealing to a lot of the CIOs that I'm talking to. How many how can we help them keep their vendor stack down and create the yeah. Answer? Well, I think Spiro, like you have a real like lived example in, in in with our with our friends at Northfield. You want to talk a little bit of kind of the problems that they were looking to solve, things that were interesting to them. And I happen to have a fancy visual, so it's a great tee up for that. Um, but I think again, urban areas, kind of in the Northeast, but also rural Minneapolis, like very similar set of problem set. Like, love to hear kind of from your words what they were solving for. Yeah, yeah, that great segue. And, and Tara, I think you're hitting the nail on the head. Uh, Northfield, Minnesota, about an hour away from uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul region. Um, they're really the only player in town, but a couple hours away. I mean, they're, they're nestled in between some large major health systems that they really have to compete on experience with. Right. And so, uh, you know, Northfield is looking to, to partners like Luma to, to really be able to deliver that seamless digital access for their patients in a way that's deeply integrated that allows them to compete with the larger organizations that can afford systems like Epic and that can leverage all the digital tools at their disposal. Um, whereas with Northfield, their their aim is to stay lean, but offer really what patients are looking for, which are mm -hmm. things like self-scheduling, automated rebooking, smart wait lists, uh, or you name it, anything that gives the patients easy, seamless access, the tip of their fingertips at a time that's most convenient for them. Uh, really allowing for 24 seven access to Northfield. Yeah. One of the things that's always struck me about a lot of our regional partners, and you know, we probably partner with like maybe a dozen or so Meditech sites specifically. Um, and one of the things that's always really struck me about them is, you know, there's that sense that I am the biggest player in the town. Like I, I want to provide great service to my patients and got to great for my communities, provide great access. But there's also the other side, it's like the patients could drive and sometimes they will drive an hour. And so, you know, Talk to me, you know, Tara, let's go back to you a little bit about like what, you know, what your, the folks you talk to, what they're trying to solve for, because you mentioned it yourself, like experience is king. You know, mm -hmm. they want to provide great experiences, like a world-class experience. Like, tell me a little bit more about what you see in the, in the market you serve in the region you work in. Yeah. Well, to your point, you know, you don't want to have to have that patient have to go 45 minutes. So a lot of times what I'm understanding and learning about the strategic objectives that uh, my clients are working on. Being able to add more services to help prevent patients from having to go. Oh, interesting. Yeah, sure. You know, so they look to schedule Luma to be able to create that access, access and prevent the patient leakage to be able to then, you know, grow your 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 practice and your, um, I would say, availabilities or the specialties for your patients. So that way you can achieve that goal and keep them close to home. So it's yes, the competition to help keep them there for the services you have, but where can we help? You know, really drive. Um, a return there. So that helps them be able to create those more services and provide more for their patients, improving that patient experience, keeping them closer to home. Makes total sense. And I know for, you know, especially like Spiro in, in your, where you were kind of the region you work in, you know, there's a lot of traveling physicians too, right? Like the doc will only be here on Tuesdays or, you know, the orthopedist will only be here Tuesday, Wednesday or whatever it is. And I, I think this like little cut of like class data that we have here, which is um, you know, what do patients want to be able to do? You know, what is the voice of the patient in this really speaks to that like thing, which is what patients want is to be able to like service themselves with providers at deploy doesn't necessarily get us there yet. And I'd love for you to kind of talk a little bit more about like how health systems that you talk to really look to technology to kind of help bridge that gap. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think this is a great point. And yeah, a lot of times when you start to think of the ideology of patients as consumers, I mean, think of the last time you were really ready to buy something that uh, was important to you, right? Like you go to the place that gives you the best experience, full yeah, stop. I can absolutely say like the number of times I've like bought something on Amazon and didn't look at the price, even though I knew I could probably gotten a little cheaper at Walmart or Target, like, yeah, it was easy for you, right? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's 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 really what the shift is meant to do is, and that's how groups like Northfield and other the other partners that we work with are able to really compete against these mega health system is by you know deploying these these digital solutions that allow them to provide that that you know Amazon quote unquote big big air quotes Amazon experience beats. My uh, my favorite my favorite thing I hear from a lot of uh, systems that I get a chance to talk to is we want to provide that like pizza tracker experience right from Domino's. <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah, you're both you're both kind of like chuckling at it, but it's like you get it, right? You get that, like, yeah. It, so it's funny. I actually recently, like a week ago, actually did order like a pizza from Domino. I was like, oh yeah, this this is pretty cool. Like it actually like the driver, like no, John is making a pizza. I'm like oh cool, okay, John's gonna and then like Frank is delivering it. I'm like like there's a whole thing around the consumerization, right? Around like how do you provide that experience? And one of the things that I want to maybe switch to is we've talked a lot about the patient's perspective. But let's also talk about the staff and like the IT teams and like those folks, because, you know, in a health system, it's, you know, you've got your patients, you've got your payers, but you also have the system itself that needs to be invested in, and built and like, you know, returned economics to getting the ROI. So a lot of our conversations, Tara, talk a lot about, and you mentioned this in kind of intro around integration, like mm-hmm. how good integration be because building an experience that's beautiful on the internet, but is not so great when you're actually working the clinic. That would never die, right? So tell me a little bit more about what 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 folks talk about with integration. Yeah, so the first thing I hear, it, you know, they don't want to have to have staff in two screens. So that that's important because the streamlined value is being able to work out of one system. Uh, and the beauty about you know Luma being able to help accommodate this for the technical side of the uh, for the technical teams is that with our platform, with not just our scheduling solutions, all of our solutions working together in tandem, keep they, keep the staff out of two, two systems as much as possible. You know, our goal is to maximize the investment into Meditech Expanse I work with all the time. So we're always gonna work to push the portal for helping patients gain access. But the reality is portals are only adopted uh, by about 30% of the population. So what Loom is going to do with our fully bi-directional integration is be able to improve the staff work balance by having all a multitude of workflows being able to be automated with one integration um, and allowing them to really work in Meditech or w- whatever the EHR may be and not having that still be the source of truth and Luma stays in the background. So oh. by by doing that, we remove a lot of that manual steps, those manual steps for that. 100%. And, and you know, Terry, you're just leading a horse to the water here and I'm just going to take a step. Because we happen to have, you know, it's not like you didn't pull up a this, but we absolutely did. Um, we have a kind of a video of just kind of showcasing how this works. So I'm just going to throw this on the screen real fast and I'll narrate it for the folks at home. So what you're seeing on the left side is a Luma scheduling experience, right? Finding an appointment, identifying yourself as a patient. And what you'll see very quickly is that appointment booked directly into CWS, right? Lands right there on the schedule. And like Spiro, when you talk to folks, like, you know, I assume no one really wants to do double data entry. I feel like that's telling you like the sky's blue and dirt is brown, but like people, I mean, it's a still consideration that people want to think about. So like, what do you hear? Like what's important for, for that integrated experience for that true bi-directional integration? Yeah. I mean, that, that's just mission critical, right? Like Tara, I'm sure you're experiencing the same thing with the folks that you work with, but I mean, every health system in the country is facing, you know, in some capacity, a situation which they're short staffed. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it, these manual workflows cause just a ton of downstream impact on the staff, uh, which then trickles down to the patients. And so having a seamless integrated experience where staff isn't having to play the swivel chair game, uh, yeah. where they can just work directly out of the source of truth is just, uh, it's paramount. It's, it's totally what 100% required today. Yeah. And when you guys think a little bit about, um, you know, the, the experience for the staff, like, you know, we've done a bunch of projects. One of the stories, uh, Spiro, we had an opportunity to go on site at uh, Phelps Memorial in yeah. Hoover, Nebraska. And there was a story, you'll have to keep me honest here if I don't remember it correctly. Yeah. They went live with some self-scheduling, patient self-scheduling, yeah. expanded on Friday. And on Monday, they had like had like a half a dozen appointments booked. Like, tell us about that story a little bit. If I got it wrong, tell me. I mean, yeah, so yeah. you're pretty spot on. So they, they went live with uh, online scheduling as a soft launch uh, on, a, on a Friday and uh, put it on their medical group website. So not even on the, the home page really. And um, uh, it required patients to have to know where to go. And somehow over the weekend with no marketing effort <laughs> at all, no marketing, I mean, they, literally they, there was no communication done to the community. Um, several patients, a, a, a small handful of patients had already booked their appointment online. Mm-hmm. I mean, just to show that like these patients in a, in a very rural farm town, even they were like, 
this is awesome. We want this and, and we're yeah. going to use this. Yeah. Well, one thing yeah, I Tara, want to it sounds like there, you've heard yeah. similar thing. I did. You know, you're hitting the nail on the head here. And I think patients are that, that right there shows that patients are thirsting for this. And I was having a conversation with one of my uh, potential clients the other day. And for them, they're the catalyst behind them wanting scheduling was because they want, again, back to that theme of meeting patients where they are, um, the ability for patients to be able to schedule outside of say nine to five business hours. So we were looking at some of the data uh, from our current customers and it was showing that 52% of this uh, larger multi-specialty group, 52% uh, of their patients booked after hours. So that's 52%. I mean, that is, that's a huge, that's a huge stat and a, and a large amount of patients that are now having a better patient experience because they don't have to, you know, leave their job or, or, you know, do with this on their lunch break. You know, they have the opportunity to go on the weekend or after hours to have that same access and just be able to book in minutes. So 52% is, is quite a large it's a big number. It's a really big number. And, and, and Tara, like, you know, we were talking a couple minutes ago about, you know, challenge hiring workforce, you know, hard to get and like people to like, you know, this, the, the, the labor cost challenges. Yeah. Do you feel like a lot of systems that you talk to and when you share that stat with folks, like they look at that as an opportunity or way to scale up without adding tons of dollars? Oh, absolutely. Again, another, another buzz term I should say is do more with less. So I mean, sure it's, it's yeah. like, it's exactly what they're looking for. You know, by creating access 24 seven, not only are you, re you're removing the need to hire more humans to throw at the problem, but now you're also reducing the volume and uh, manual work for the patient or the staff that is managing this during the day. So it's a win-win. One of the reasons I love working in healthcare IT and in healthcare in general is it's the opportunity for all boats to rise. Like you don't have to rob from Peter to pay Paul, right? Like the staff, you need, you know, you don't have to hire more staff. Patients are happier. Provider schedules are more full. There's no double data entry or documentation. It's just like all boats rise, right? Like everybody wins. Totally. The, the last thing, Spiro, I'll throw this one. I'll throw this one to you. Is I think when doing online scheduling, doing patient self scheduling, and expanse, and you know, on any other EHR, sometimes there's some hearts and minds have to change. Like the providers have to get on board. Like, how do you like? Is advice to any health system leader? Like, kind of, what do you think are good strategies to kind of help move the needle on kind of the culture shift that may have to occur to kind of let that start happening? Yeah, I think we're starting to see a shift in the communities, uh, that, especially the ones that I work in, where you know, providers are now you know being urged to see more patients and, and open up the calendars in a way that allows for more patients to get on there. Um, I mean, you, you look at back to the consumerism topic of like, I mean, my dentist, my barber, my, my dog's groomer, I could schedule online and I could change my appointment via text. Like I could do all of that. And today, I mean, and I've seen this with a couple of health systems, like compensation plans tied to patient experience. Yes. And uh, you know, the specific um, you know, specific metrics tied to those. Um, and so like, this is a direct driver and, and being able to deliver on just like that top tier experience. And when positioning that to the providers, it's often met with minimal resistance. You know, I mean, it, at the end of the day, they want their patients healthy. And uh, when they have a technology solution that can match that provider preference uh, in a way that's real time, um, it, it, it allows for that ease of entry for them. Yeah. Yeah, Tara, I love, yeah, love your thoughts. Go for it. Yeah. So um, with that in mind, it's an, it's important that when looking for a scheduling solution, I feel like our our clients and our potential clients look for something like Bluma that's highly configurable. Because yeah. when you're looking at opening up access, you, some some providers you don't want the floodgates open. So with a system like Bluma, we can really help to balance out that utilization by increasing volume in certain areas and making sure with things like rebooking and waitlisting, we're completing in others. So it's not just throwing humans to, uh, you know, new patients at the problem, we're able to actually manage and balance it, which is actually very important. And we're able to do the, do so with the bi-directional integration that exists and the, uh, the type of technology that we offer. I, I love that. And, you know, I got this, you know, the same sort of thing around the control elements. I literally got an hour ago text message from my dentist that says, if you don't confirm this appointment, we're going to offer this lot to somebody on the wait list. I was like, Aggressive? Right? <laughs> I get it. I get it. You're running a business too. I get it. <laughs> Nobody so, likes you as a dentist. That's just the way. It goes. I know. I'm like, I'm definitely showing up. <laughs> they, have, they have to be a little bit more persistent. <laughs> so let's take the screens here off. Let's just come back to the three of us. Uh, would love, you know, kind of any final thoughts around like, you know, what can systems are looking to do great patient facing scheduling experience with expanse like one bit of advice like spiro like one final thought one piece of advice for cios and access leaders it doesn't have to be hard 
Uh, now, that we're over the hump, now that we're over the hump of COVID and, and margins are improving, groups are looking for ways to scale in a way that's efficient. And leveraging a technology partner that's deeply integrated and embedded within your Meditech experience, uh, it, it allows for that ease of scale without without rising human costs as well. So um, there's a lot of good work happening and, and more to come. Love it. It doesn't have to be difficult. Tara? Yeah, the one thing I would say, especially for the technical evaluators out there, is that not everything, you know, not all uh, workflows are the same. I, I highly encourage folks to really dive into that integration and the mm -hmm. platform that you're being presented. Because what you'll find with Luma, not only are we bi-directionally integrated, but we have created all the engineering for our own solution. So that means our entire platform talks to each other. And that gives you the opportunity to really systematize over time and scale. You know, you want to make sure you do your research and dig in and say, you know, did this did this vendor create their technology or is it a result of a merger or an acquisition? And does that result in additional integrations into your system? So I feel like when we unpack that, that that is definitely something that is of huge value for yeah. Uh, the CIO is to really explore. Love it. Yeah, that's great advice from both of you. I mean, both when looking at existing solutions, but how to actually scale up your, uh, you know, and build out a, a very sustainable patient self-scheduling opportunity. And with that, Spiro, Tara, thank you so much for joining us on this inaugural edition of On Air. We're excited to kind of share more about the future of like what we see in the world of digital health, both from, you know, our own team, from people in the wild, from thought leaders. This is the first of a long set of activities uh, here to kind of share what's best and what's happening in digital health. We'll see you next time. It's magic. Thanks for having us.